It's Wednesday, November 29th. My name's Juan Brown. You're watching the Blanco Lirio channel. And last night, another Osprey was lost, this time an Air Force Osprey off the coast of Japan, resulting in one fatality at the time of this recording. This makes the second Osprey that's crashed this year and the fourth Osprey that's crashed in the last two years. Let's check it out. I'm working with a bit of a cold here today, so bear with me. Starting with the Air Force Times. This was a U.S. Air Force CV-22 Osprey, I believe one of six that are deployed to Yokota Air Base, Japan. The crew belongs to the Air Force's 353rd Special Operations Wing at Yokota Air Base outside of Tokyo. Yokota was a base I spent a lot of time at flying the 141 for the Air Force active duty. The Osprey was on a training mission from Iwakuni to Kadena in Okinawa and had some sort of an engine problem or engine fire apparently en route and was attempting to make an emergency landing here at Yakushima Airport when they ended up crashing into the ocean just short of the runway. Japanese Chief Cabinet Secretary Matsuno said the Osprey disappeared from radar a few minutes before the Coast Guard received the emergency call. The aircraft requested an emergency landing at the Yakushima Airport about five minutes before it was lost from radar. NHK quoted a Yakushima resident as saying he saw the aircraft turn upside down with fire coming from one of its engines and then an explosion before it fell into the sea. The Japanese Vice Defense Minister said that the aircraft had attempted an emergency sea landing and quoted the U.S. military as saying its pilot did everything possible until the last minute. So it sounds like another massive mechanical failure in this case, including an engine fire, brought down yet another Osprey. The Osprey aircraft has had a checkered past with a, it's a very complicated aircraft with a lot of different failure modes and has had quite a few accidents. And recently I found, well, just this morning while researching this, I finally found the accident investigation as to what happened to the Marine Osprey that crashed near Glamis, the Glamis Riding Area in Southern California with the hard clutch engagement. And this accident report gives an excellent explanation of the systems on board the Osprey and exactly what happened to the mechanical failure of that Osprey in Glamis that was another fatal accident. And this is going to be of concern for investigators investigating this most recent crash. Was this engine fire caused by another hard clutch engagement, a problem that was supposed to have been fixed by now? And why did the pilot lose control of the aircraft with a simple engine fire as the V-22 Osprey is designed to operate on one engine? And this is how. The V-22 Osprey is neither an aircraft nor a helicopter. It's a tilt rotor with a lot of very complicated transmissions and clutches in order to make it work. It also has a lot of design constraints to enable it to fold up like this into a compact format to fit on, on board either large transport aircraft or various ships. As a result, the main tilting rotors are of relatively small diameter with a very high wing loading and require an enormous 6,000 horsepower Allison Rolls-Royce turboshaft engine to power each tilt rotor. Okay, let's see if I can get through this. We start with the Allison turboshaft engine, which runs through a torque meter, measures the torque output of the engine, and then runs through a input quill clutch mechanism right here before entering the um, prop rotor gearbox system. So this clutch is what allows the prop rotor gearbox system to disconnect and be driven by the other engine via the interconnecting drive system between the two rotors. This interconnecting drive system between the two rotors keeps both rotors operating at the same RPM and takes over for the other rotor in the event of an engine failure by being released by this clutch. And I believe this is a picture of the clutch mechanism here. It looks to me to be a simple sprag type uh, dog bone clutch mechanism, if that's the correct input quill clutch mechanism diagram. So from the engine through a torque meter, 
by the way, all of this is controlled by FADEC or um, digital engine control system. So a lot of this is automated when it comes to the pilot. So from the engine, through the torque meter, through the clutch, to the gearbox for the prop rotor. And then it come, it's got to go through a tilt angle gearbox. So you can individually tilt the rotors. And then it's got to go through a main wing gearbox because the entire wing has to rotate as well. And of course, all of this results in a lot of power losses, all these gearboxes, and with the short diameter of the rotor, that's why you got to have such a high horsepower engine for each engine driving this entire operation. And a couple of quotes right out of the report. Engine shutdown with a FADEC in control is defined as a controlled shutdown. The controlling FADEC initiates a shutdown sequence when an engine overspeed, over temperature, or start error condition occurs. So that's some of the automatic features for an engine shutdown, which should have been the case for this most recent accident. A little more on the interconnection drive system and what led to the accident in Glamis. The MV22B has an interconnect drive system that runs through the wing to synchronize the prop rotors and transfer power between the prop rotor systems and all accessories and equipment. If one engine fails, the interconnect drive system transmits the power to the other prop rotor gearbox on the side of the failed engine. This interconnecting drive system is the only means of providing power to both prop rotor gearboxes in the event of a single engine failure, providing power from the single operating engine. And that single engine service ceiling, I looked it up, is about 9,500 feet. So you can at max gross weight, you should be able to hold 9,500 feet on one engine. Uh, with two engines, the maximum service ceiling for the Osprey is about 25,000 feet. The failure of an engine and, that should be in capital letters right here, the failure of an engine and the interconnect drive system creates an asymmetric power condition that requires an immediate response to regain control. If you have this dual failure of both an engine and the interconnect drive system because of a problem with the clutch, you're done. You, you, the, you cannot maintain control of the aircraft. The failure will cut off power to one rotor, creating an asymmetry as the functioning engine can only drive one rotor to generate thrust. If the functioning engine is not secured, you don't pull the power back. Control may be lost as the unbalanced rotor thrust can quickly result in loss of control of the aircraft if immediate and appropriate pilot action is not taken. And even if you pull the power on the good engine, it sounds to me like you're still going to crash. And one thing that can cause this sort of dual failure is a failure of the quill clutch, a hard clutch engagement. If this clutch fails or slips, especially if you've got full power and you're transitioning, to uh, to a flying mode and that clutch slips, it can bang that transmission so hard that it snaps the interconnecting drive system. Now here's the final opinion of what happened in the Glamis crash of June of 22. It was one of the rare cases where it was a pure mechanical failure. This mishap was not caused by human factors, not by the pilots. The weather didn't have a uh, play in this accident. It was not caused by maintenance malpractice or deviation from established component specification. The mishap was caused by a dual HCE or hard clutch engagement event that created a single engine interconnecting drive system failure, compound emergency leading to an unrecoverable low altitude departure from controlled flight and a rapid rate of descent. And this is supposed to have been fixed by now, and this is something investigators will be looking at very closely in this most recent accident. Did a hard clutch engagement have anything to do with this most recent accident? So here's what happened in the Glamis case. While on climb out to an overhead pattern on an approximate heading of 295 degrees, the mishap pilot one experienced a dual hard clutch engagement that sent destructive impulses throughout the drive train the dual hard clutch engagement caused the right hand tilt motor shaft to shear and the left hand tilt motor shaft to yield, resulting in a right hand engine overspeed and a left hand engine power limited condition. In response to the right hand engine overspeed, 
the right hand engine FADEC, the digital control system, executed a controlled engine shutdown, causing a rapid engagement of the interconnecting drive system to allow the left hand engine to power the right hand prop rotor. The rapid transfer of torque sent destructive impulses throughout the drivetrain, causing the interconnecting drive system to fail. The mishap aircraft's interconnect drive system failure led to a complete loss of right-hand prop rotor thrust. The sudden loss of thrust from the right-hand prop rotor triggered an extreme thrust asymmetry and departure from controlled flight. You, you can't fly these things with only one engine, one prop producing thrust. Mission Pilot 1 and Mission Pilot 2 fought to regain control of the mishap aircraft in the rapid and uncontrolled turning descent, rolling the nacelles 6 degrees aft to 86 degrees to increase the vertical component of the aircraft's lift vector. The aircraft's air crew remained in their crew positions to work through the emergency condition, but the departure from control flight was unrecoverable based on the aircraft's configuration and altitude. There were no prior indications of an impending dual uh, hard clutch engagement event, no steps that the pi either pilots could have taken to prevent the occurrence, and no means of recovery once the compound emergency commenced. Across all the branches of the military, there's about 400 aircraft total of the various variations of the Osprey. They are buying no more new Ospreys, but they're going to continue to operate the current fleet of Ospreys. The entire fleet has flown about 600,000 hours of flying time, and by my rough count, there's been about 61 fatalities across the entire fleet. Now here the Marines say that their mishap rate with the Marine MV-22s is about 3.16 per 100,000 flying hours, which is lower than that of the AV-8 Harrier and the F-18 and the F-35B and the CH-53E. It's also on par with the total Marine Corps average 3.1, which includes aircraft like the KC-130J. Personally, coach, Give me the C-130, the aircraft that I enjoyed flying for the Air National Guard. Thank you so much for your support of this channel, especially the folks over on Patreon that make this content possible. See you here.